Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be learning on the topic electrochemistry and for today we are going to be looking at the standard electrode potentials and specifically how we can be able to use standard electrode potentials to predict when the reaction will occur or not. So let's dive in and see how that happens. So the E values of a redox reaction, if the sum of the, uh, the EMF, that is when we are calculating the EMF, if we get a value that is positive, it tells us that this reaction is going to simultaneously occur. But if you get a negative value, it tells us that this reaction cannot occur. So EMF values help us to know if some reactions will occur, which also has some application in other industries. So let's look at an example. We will start with this uh, reaction using this electrochemical series. So if you look at this reaction, this is a normal reaction. You can see zinc is getting into the solution. So this is occurring at the anode and then this is the one that is occurring at the cathode. So we want to change this equation and, and correct the error. So it's supposed to be zinc, uh, zinc ions, then uh, uh, salt bridge, then copper ions, then copper. So we are going to use the electrode potentials that we have been given from the table. So the copper is positive, um, positive 0 0.34 and for zinc is negative 0 0.76. So we can calculate the EMF, electromotive force of this uh, cell by E uh, reduction minus E oxidation. So the one that is undergoing reduction is the one that is gaining electrons. In this case, copper has the highest tendency. So it is positive 0 0.34, then minus negative 0 0.76, which gives us positive 1.1 volts. You can use the other method that we talked about. That is copper ions plus two electrons. Uh, to form copper solid, which gives us positive 0 0.34. And then we change the equation of zinc to zinc solid, uh, dissociates to form uh, zinc ions plus two electrons are given off. So the sign changes from negative 0 0.76 to minus 0 0.76 to positive. And then when we add these two, you get positive 1.1 volts. So when you look at this EMF, it is positive. This tells us that this reaction will occur simultaneously. So let's reverse the equation and see what is going to happen. So the reverse is in this case. So we have copper dissociating to form copper ions and then the, the um, salt bring then uh, zinc ions forms zinc solid. So you can see we have reversed the equation. So remember for copper here it is zero, uh, positive 0 0.34 and for zinc is negative 0 0.76. But now we need to be very careful because you have changed the equation. So the copper is the one that is uh, discharging to form copper ions and two electrons are given off. So the equation that you've been given from the table shows that copper gains electron. But you can see from the half, uh, from the cell notation, copper is the one that is losing electron. So we have to change the for, uh, the sign. It becomes positive zero, uh, negative 0 0.34. And then zinc ions uh, gain those two electrons to form zinc solid. So we we'll go with this, uh, it's supposed to be negative 0 0.76. So after that, we add both of the uh, equations. So it becomes negative uh, 1.1 volts. So it's the same value we got in the previous working, but in this case, you can see a negative value. This tells us that it's not possible for copper ions to uh, uh, lose electrons when placed in a cell containing zinc as well, like the zinc half cell. So zinc is more reactive or has the highest tendency to lose electrons in comparison to copper. So this reaction will not occur.
So let's look at now more questions and make some conclusions if the reactions are going to occur or not. So we have this uh, equation. So we have for copper and silver. So remember, copper is positive 0 0.34. Uh, silver is going to be positive 0 0.80. So copper is positive 0 0.34. This is positive 0 0.80. So in this case, from the cell notation, we know that copper is discharging to form copper ions plus two electrons. We can use as it is because this uh, positive three, uh, 0 0.34 shows the equation where copper ions are gaining two electrons to form copper solid. So you can still continue using this use the formula, but it's okay. So for us to change the equation, it's going to be negative 0 0.34. So we'll do both cases so that you can see. So the silver gains two silver ions gains the two electrons to form a silver solid. So this is positive 0 0.80. So the same case happens here. Positive 0 0.80. So we can use the formula. The formula says it's E cell is equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. So E reduction is the one that has the highest tendency to lose um, to gain electrons. So you take the one that is more positive. You look at this to the one that is more positive is a silver. So it becomes positive 0 0.80 minus and then E oxidation, which is now copper that undergoes loss, which is positive 0 0.34, which gives us positive 0 0.46. 0 0.46. So this tells us that this reaction will occur. If you were to use the other method like we showed, so you're just going to add this two equation, which is still going to give you a positive 0 0.46 volts. So this reaction will occur. And you see for this equation, both values, had, both standard electrode potentials were positive. So it is very important to be careful in this case. So the one that is most positive is the one that is undergoes reduction. The one that is less positive is the one that now will undergo oxidation like uh, in turn. So let's look at this. Uh, so this is for chlorine and bromine. When you go back to the table, chlorine is positive 2.87. Bromine is uh, positive 1.36. So positive 2.87, then positive 1.86. So let's confirm that. Positive uh, 1.36. It's 3. Again, once again, we can do this question in two ways. So we can do E cell is equals to E reduction minus E oxidation. So E reduction is a compound that reacts by gaining. This is the most positive. And if you look at chlorine and bromine, chlorine is the most positive. As you can see, it's gaining electrons to form uh, the chloride ions. So it's the most positive, so it will be 2.87. Then when I see oxidation, automatically the other one becomes the oxidation, so positive 1.36. So this is going to give us the E cell of positive 1.151 volts. So you can do it the other way as well. So when you look at the equation, it's going to be... Uh, from the table, let's go back to the table. This is a table of our equation. You can see chlorine and bromine, both of them are gaining electrons. So we have to change the equations. So it's chlorine gaining uh, two electrons to form chloride ions and bromine gaining also two electrons to form the bromide ion. 
So this is positive 2.87, this is positive 1.36. But remember, we have said chlorine does not undergo, uh, it, it undergoes gain, so this is correct, but bromine does not gain electrons. If you consider the electrode potentials, bromine reacts by losing. So, we have to change this equation so it becomes 2 bromide ion reacts to lose 2 electrons to form bromine gas. So, we change this equation becomes negative 1.36. So, you take this value and this value and add them. If you add them, you are going to get also positive 1.15 volts. Let's do another question. One more question. Use the information below on standard electrode potentials to answer the questions that follow. So we are going to calculate the EMF of cell formed between C and D and see if the reaction will occur or not. So when you look at uh, C and D, this is this is what we have. So you can see C and D. D is the most positive, so this one is the one that undergoes a reduction. That is loss, and then C is the less positive, so it's the one that are a good um, oxidation loss. So D gains um, electrons lost by C. So when you are we, we are to calculate the EMF, it's going to be E reduction minus E oxidation. So the reduction. The one that is undergoing a gain of electron is the one that is most positive, which is now D. So it is positive 0 0.44 minus the one that is undergoing oxidation, which is C, which is 0, positive 0 0.34, which gives us positive 0 0.1. So we can use the other method as well, but it tells us that this reaction will occur. So you can go ahead and use the other method to calculate the EMF, or you can stick with the formula as you have done. So that's how you're able to tell some reactions will occur or not in a chemical reaction. If you do the EMF, if you calculate the electromotive force, and you get a positive value that tells you that the reaction will occur, but if you get a negative value, it tells you that the reaction is not going to occur. So uh, see you in the next lesson as we look at the dry cells.